Hi everybody, this is Fox Nomad and today I want to help you travel smarter by taking you on a Turkish street food tour of Berlin. Now the reason I chose Berlin to do this is because these are a lot of street foods that you don't find really outside of Turkey. So you've probably seen döner everywhere and kebab everywhere. There are a couple of street foods that you can find in this city that are more difficult to find in other international cities around the world. So today I am starting off with the simit, which is a very basic, straightforward street food. It doesn't have a quite uh, German take as some of the other street foods do here. This is very close to what you'll find in Turkey. It's a very plain sort of Turkish bagel, kind of with sesame seeds. <laughs> so it's sort of a Turkish bagel that you'll find in the streets in Turkey, sold in the mornings typically, but you can get them in shops as well with a cup of tea. So I'm here at Akın Smitci, which sells smit in Kreuzberg, which is the sort of Turkish neighborhood or Turkish area of Berlin. So I'm starting off the street food tour with this. I will leave an address and phone number, hours, all of that in the description below. So if you want to find any of these places, I'll be sure to let you know so you can get here if you're ever in Berlin. <laughs> so the lady just asked if simit is what I'm doing a video about, but it's such a basic and simple street food. A lot of people don't like it because it's quite plain, but it's one of my favorites. I like sort of simple everyday food that you can find pretty much anywhere and it's not easy to do a simple food very well. I think it's really easy to underestimate how hard it is to kind of make a simple food and this is one of the few places outside of Turkey where I've been able to find it that's actually decent. That was really nice. One of the biker ladies just stopped because she thought I was taking a photo, which I appreciate. Anyway, what I wanted to say is at Akın they've got also all kinds of doughy based snacks, street food, sort of pacha, all these things that you see here, but I can't eat it all because I've got a lot of places to eat today. So I'm biking and I'm walking, I'm trying to get to everywhere, burning as many calories as possible. But for now, I'm on to the next place. So I can imagine now, so I can imagine now as I'm walking to the next place, some of my Turkish friends wondering, why is he doing a video about Simit? Is that where to start? And actually the owner of the bakery there was asking me the same thing. Why do a video about this? First of all, there's not much content about it. It's one of my favorite foods because it's so simple and it, it's just something that's very Turkish, but also something that's a little bit different than the usual kebab and the street food that you probably hear a lot about. So this, I suspect, is probably not going to be on the top of many people's list, even in Turkey, as far as a street food or a street snack. And if you're a vegetarian or vegan, this probably doesn't come first to mind. But chikirfte translates into raw meatball. But these days, there's no meat in it at all. It's completely vegan. Let me give you a look at it first. So essentially in the late 90s, I believe, there was a mad cow outbreak in England and I think that spread to Turkey or at least the worry did. So what was basically raw ground meat that was uh, minced, mixed, mixed by hand with spices to cook out all of the bacteria to sort of sterilize it. That's gone away and it's now been replaced with bulgur wheat, which is completely vegan. So there's no meat in it, there's no dairy in this at all. It's pretty much just minced bulgur wheat that has a little bit of spice in it. And this place in Berlin, I think, makes the best chikirfte that you can find in the city. It's a little bit out of the ways in Kreuzberg, but if you can get here, I think it's well worth it. They also make a couple of other vegan and vegetarian options of traditionally meat-based dishes from Turkey. And that includes this ichtikirfte, which is basically stuffed meatball with sort of breading on the outside and then it's going to have traditionally would have ground meat in the inside but here they have filled it with a sort of bulgur wheat rice which makes it vegan in this case. So I'm going to cut into that one first. 
Now the vegetarian version of this is not traditional, but they've done creative here and stuffed it with potatoes and carrots and peas to make it a vegan version of a traditionally meat-based dish. It's an interesting version because I think the breadiness and then not having the softer meat on the inside makes it a little bit stale, so it's a little bit too starchy, but if you like potatoes and you like starchy foods, then this is a good option, and if you're vegan, it's an even better option for you. So all of this comes as part of their vegan. They have also a vegetarian plate, but this is their vegan plate, which has the vegan ichikofte, which is basically sort of a breaded stuffed with usually ground meat, but in this case, it's potato, carrots, and peas. You've got stuffed grape leaves, which are olive oil based. They're stuffed with rice. And the chi köfte, which is the raw meatball, but it doesn't have any meat in it. It's made with bulgur wheat, which is mixed with various spices. And it tastes somewhat similar to the same. And if you're vegetarian or vegan, this is a great option for you that you may not have heard about if you're not very familiar with Turkish food and Turkish street food. So next I want to try these you probably do know stuffed grape leaves it's pretty common Middle East Greek Turkey it's pretty common in a huge variety of that part of the Eastern Mediterranean uh, this is not going to be unfamiliar it's not really street food but it's a nice bonus to get it in a plate like this which is really nice to try really good flavor nice use of good quality olive oil nice amount generous amount of lemon which always makes this taste way better than it can if you don't put enough lemon in it it's not gonna taste really good so this is actually a really good one and one of my favorite foods again so I'm very picky about how this tastes when people make it uh, so if it's not like what I was used to growing up then I'm generally not gonna like it but this one good use of the olive oil a lot of flavor in the rice, definitely cooked for a long time, and a lot, a lot of lemon, which is how it, it should be. I can't believe I gotta eat <clears throat> three or four more places after here, but hopefully this helps kind of broaden at least what your idea of Turkish street food is and the types of different cuisine, types of different snacks you can get in Berlin, particularly if you're vegan or vegetarian, although I'm gonna show you some meat dishes coming up soon but I figured these are great ways to try a different cuisine and it's very forgiving if you like meat, if you don't like meat then these dishes are going to be a good choice for you. Alright, so now we're on time for this but... Eating it like that is sort of the savage way, that's usually how I start because I'm very hungry but there's a better way to do this First of all, chi köfte should be spicy originally, like I said, the spices were mixed in there to help cook the bacteria, to help sort of sterilize it so you could eat the raw meatball. So it would sit, so you'd have to by hand sort of knead that, those spices into the raw meat so it would get cooked by hand. So that would take about an hour, hour and a half. Then you would let it sit and it would supposedly cook out at least reduce the amount of bacteria or parasites or anything like that, the things you don't want with your raw meat and it should be spicy and I'll just say this is spicy. It's got a good kick to it. I would say it's nothing crazy so it's not like uh, it's not like the Chinese restaurant the video that I'll link to up here it's not like that at all so it's just not that hit you really hard in the face. I think if you can handle spicy food this won't be too bad so I'd say it's about a five six out of ten on a heat scale so it's nothing crazy but it does have a kick for sure all right so if you can't handle spicy food let me just up that to like a 6.5 they've done it right here it's spicy very flavorful but now let me show you how to do this the right way so you take your chikefte take your bread put that in there that's how you start all right so you're gonna do that take a little bit of the lettuce some mint here, some parsley or lemon obviously, so you put that on. You can throw in the tomato too, but I feel like that's just, that's just too excessive for me. Take that. Ah, one other thing that I'm forgetting, which is 
this, which is a sort of pomegranate based sauce. This goes with chikofte. It's pretty much they go together. You you get chikofte, you get this sauce, you get this sauce, you know it's going with chikofte. It's a sweet pomegranate based sauce, which you can put on. It's a little bit too sweet for me. So I try not to use too much of it. But it adds kind of a sweet flavor to the little mini sandwich that you just made. Something like that. Focus camera. So the bread here is used is a little bit thinner than you find in a typical durum or a typical wrap. It's a little bit thinner than a tortilla. It's pretty plain flavored, so it doesn't have a lot of other, you know, it's not got buckwheat in it or anything like that. It's pretty much white, very flat, thin bread that you use to wrap around. First bite, you taste the mint, and then you get the sweetness of the sauce, and then followed up by the spice that comes from the chikofte as the last. As the last flavor that hits you toward the end. Alright, this time I'm gonna get a little bit crazy and put a tomato in it. Liberal use of parsley and some mint as well. Going down with just a little bit of pomegranate sauce. <laughs> pomegranate sauce has sugar added to it, so it's a little bit syrupy. It's got a sort of strong, very sweet flavor. So I'd recommend, unless you really want your cheek after wrap to be very, very, very sweet, just use a little bit. All right, let me see if I can show my second wrap there. Here's a note to every kebab owner or anybody who's thinking of opening a Turkish restaurant anywhere in the world. Probably have a better chance selling this, especially if you market it well. So I've noticed here in Berlin and in other cities in Germany, it's sort of marketed as vegan treat. Just kind of an ironic name considering this means raw meatball. If you're trying to market this anywhere in the world, vegan treat, Turkish vegan street food, something like that. I really think it would be very popular. Honestly, how many more Turkish kebab places does the world really need? How, how many more? All right, so now that I've had my chikofte, my raw meatball, I'm pretty full. So I'm gonna ride to another part of the city. It's still in the sort of, still sort of in the south, southeast part of Berlin, mostly the Kreuzberg area, where you can find these different types of street foods and you can come here and visit. They're all sort of spread out throughout that area. Of course, I'll have a map for you in directions. Now I'm gonna head basically right to the south of the city to try another sort of Germanized, different Turkish food in Berlin that's become very popular because people here are a lot of vegetarians and vegans and the marketing seems to be towards vegetarians and vegans. So I'm going to one of the best places to get one of those vegetarian options of a very common meat-based dish. Oh, and if you like meat, it's gonna have that too. So you just saw that, that is, uh, that is uh, not happening, so going to option B, I'm sure there's somewhere close by. So while I'm looking for that last thing to show you, I stopped by another street food along the way which you might enjoy, also has meat and vegetarian options, and that's kumpir. Basically a gigantic stuffed potato. So you show up essentially and they give you a whole bunch of different options. Usually they mix in butter with the potatoes. So they'll mix butter and cheese into the potato to whip it up into this very creamy base and then you pretty much pick what you want in it. Again there are vegetarian options, there are also meat options you can choose from and then you just load it up. These potatoes are way bigger than your average potato. You load them up and you just eat it like basically from the top in. It's like a giant 
potato salad except everything isn't quite mixed up yet. So what I've got in mind here are some olives on the top, some jalapeno peppers, spicy peppers. This isn't exactly quite traditional. You've also got some small salad leaves in there. Tomato, also this bulgur you can see which is what the chikefte is made out of. It's made out of a finer version of that bulgur wheat. And some avocado you can get. There's some hummus in there as well. So I went for the vegetarian options, a little bit lighter. Gonna eat a few bites of this and then go on to the next place. I have had a lot of food already, so I'm gonna eat part of this and save it for later today. So that's one of my favorite places in the city. It's really good, the ingredients are always fresh. They mix it up however you want it. If you want vegan, let them know they've got that ready. Vegetarian or with meat, pretty much they get your potato ready. If you want a vegan one, tell them without butter, without cheese. Now heat the potato up and as your potato is cooking you can take a few minutes to relax and then when your potato is ready you pretty much just pick and choose what you want you can point they speak English German and Turkish there so one of those three languages or obviously just pointing at the ingredients works as well it's a pretty simple concept it's basically a gigantic baked potato with all the ingredients you could want I've also got some uh, roasted tomatoes in there as well sun-dried tomatoes with some of course olive oil and hummus bulgur wheat I think there's an olive in there and a little bit of lettuce there are no limit on the number of ingredients so if you want one or two things or if you go like me and want pretty much everything on your potato on your kumpir then that's fine as well don't hold back if you want something ask for it that place as you can see is pretty small it's just got a few seats get some tea or some cola to go with your kumpir they also sell a couple of other items but kumpir is their main thing it's right by the metro station so it's easily accessible so if you want a different type of Kreuzberg a little bit smaller a little bit more food options not a lot of tourists come to this particular part you're gonna leave the name of the nearest metro station right there. You just come down the stairs and you will start to see, you know, you find this Kumpir place with address is in the description below. You'll find that and then you can walk around. There are a lot of small eateries. It's also close to the Market Hall 9, which a video is coming up on that, which has a very special event that happens every Thursday night, which is later today. So I'm getting ready for that. Eating before this much food was probably not a good idea, but I will be prepared. That's for the other nationalities in this area as well. They tend to be very niche and bring very specific and different food items from all over the world, from Africa and Asia in particular in this neighborhood. So you can find a lot of good places to eat and it's worth definitely making a visit out here. So of the foods that we've gone over or that I've shown you, Smit is more like a snack, breakfast snack, just something to get you going in the morning. Chikefte is a moderately light lunch, I would say. Not too heavy, not too heavy, obviously vegetarian, so not a lot of heavy oils or meats. You can probably have that and be fine. Now, a kumpir, on the other hand, is a big, big meal. So this is a lot of food. If you were gonna do a street food tour, I would say give this one whole day on its own. Probably a kumpir, unless you've got a massive appetite or you've just spent eight hours at the gym. This is probably one thing and then you can snack throughout the day but I wouldn't try to do all of this in one day. And this potato is really sneaky so you can eat a lot more of it than you expect. I'm just gonna have one more bite and then we're gonna go to the last and final street food for me to show you today. But there's a lot more food coming up but for today, at least for this morning type because I'm going to street food fair later tonight. But for the daytime hours, kumpir and I've got one more thing to show you. All right, now for the final, at least for today, at least for this video, the final Turkish street food. It's also vegetarian. Uh, that was sort of unintentional. I didn't mean to make this a uh, veg only uh, street food tour, but you know, that's what it's become. And this is, looks like, well, it's in a durum shape, which is essentially wrapped in dough like this. You'll find döner and such like this. But this is filled with halloumi cheese, so you can see that there. It's basically a thick cheese that's been lightly fried on the outside. Fairly high protein content. Also comes with some green salad, some red salad, a little bit of lemon and some pickles if you want in there also. So this is also another good 
Turkish street food that you can find here in Berlin. And when you chew it, it's got kind of this rubbery consistency. You can sort of feel like you're almost chewing rubber, but it's got a great taste. Obviously, the consistency is always just a little bit unusual. It's the only food I can think of that has this consistency. So you can see the cheese in there, how it's white on the inside and just slightly fried on the outside with a lot of salad. You can obviously get a lot of different sauces with this as well. So I've literally just spent the entire day eating. Hope you've enjoyed this video. I've got more food from Berlin coming up for you soon. If you have any questions about these foods, please feel free to let me know in the comments below. And while you're down there, hit the like and subscribe buttons. I'll have new videos for you every week. Thanks very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Oh. I guess this is the blooper pit. So I'll just tell you a funny story. So I've got the tripod right here up on a Uber jump bike they call it. So basically it's a bike that's got a little motor to it with a battery so when you pedal it goes pretty fast. It's really fun to ride. And the only thing you gotta do is you basically you log in on your Uber app, unlock the bike and then you go, there's a small lock there, maybe I can. So basically it's got a small lock on there and what you do is you log in on Uber and then you pull the lock out and then you go, you get the motorized bike and then when you're done, you're supposed to close the lock back up and then what it will do is it will just charge your credit card, your Uber account and then you leave the bike and somebody else picks it up. So that's how that's supposed to work. What I did on the other hand was I forgot basically to lock that back into place and uh, I could not find the bike when I realized that I did not lock the bike. So I went back, bike is gone. So what I ended up doing is, I was like, okay, how do I cancel this from the Uber app? Basically, no way. Essentially though, so what I did was I wrote to Uber, I tried calling them and it's like, all right, my bike is gone and I'm probably gonna get charged a whole bunch of money because the bike is missing. I looked it up on the GPS. You can actually track the bike. You've got to go to help on the screen so you can actually track the bike. So I found the bike and it was just basically going around this one or two block area. It was going around and just kind of walking and following him. I was like, maybe, I can get the bike, probably just some kids in the area. So about 15 minutes later, thankfully there was a long line at that dinner place because otherwise I wouldn't have realized the bike wasn't locked. So I found the bike, it's in this park. There's like maybe like five or six teenagers just hanging around, looking like they don't have much to do. They've got the bike and they basically, they've stuffed all their bags into it. It's basically become kind of like the, the, the pillar of the teenage park. And they're all taking turns riding around on it, three, four kids at a time. Anyway, I, I got the bike, I just immediately locked it in. A whole bunch of kids started yelling at me and stuff, and I was explaining to them it was my bike. And uh, they didn't seem happy about it, but they realized that I was less happy about them using the bike on my credit card. We, we, we all seemed to sort it out. Anyway, I can't really blame them. It's probably something I would have done at their age. So anyway, it was all good. I actually locked that bike up, got another bike and was on my way and I've finished the video now. Thanks very much for watching. If you're still watching, please hit the subscribe button. You've gotten this far. You've gotten this far. So hit the subscribe button. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.